Adam Taxon with Rabbi Nachum Kerensky of um, Chabad at the Beaches in Ponte Vedra Beach, Florida. Uh, it is December 27th, a few hours before Shabbos, and uh, we're just going to talk about this week's Torah reading. If you are like me and really didn't review it at all, uh, that's okay, but uh, we're going to get a little summary and some interesting facts for it, or if you're just interested in the subject, Rabbi Kerensky, thank you for being with me. What's going on in this week, Parsha Vayera, which is in which is in Exodus toward the beginning. I forget the exact chapters. So uh, this this week's Torah portion, the second is the second uh, uh, Torah portion right. of the Book of Exodus, and uh, we really have uh, an interesting phenomenon. We have uh, the, ex- the Book of Exodus begins with the enslavement of the Jewish people in Egypt, and uh, it goes on to talk about uh, it goes on to this week's Torah portion. It goes on to talk about the famous uh, approach of God, uh, uh, God sending Moses into into Egypt and telling him to let my people go, and, and uh, Pharaoh Pharaoh saying, uh, "No, I'm no." My thought. <laughs> Pharaoh saying, uh, Pharaoh saying, "No, I'm not going to let them go. I'm going to keep them here as my as my slaves." And uh, you have a very this is a very uh, unique uh, a very unique uh, thing takes place in this Torah portion, and that is that it says when God said, tells Moses to go to Pharaoh, he says to him. But God says to Bo El Paro, go to Pharaoh, as opposed to telling him, I'm sorry, Bo El come to Pharaoh, as opposed to telling him, late for Pharaoh, go to Pharaoh. Now, it, when studying the Bible, it's very important to study uh, A, in Hebrew, to know the Hebrew, because there's so many nuances and so many uh, very unique, uh, uh, very unique things that we can learn just from learning learning in the genuine, the original in Hebrew, and so many things are lost in translation, mm-hmm. and sometimes completely inaccurate in translation, and in addition to many subtle layers of meaning that, uh, that one could learn from Hebrew, Hebrew is a much more complex language. In addition to that, you have, uh, you know, you, you know, so you have, you have uh, the Torah is also studied on many different layers, including the literal translation, and then, of course, there's the mystical. Most importantly, there's, what does it mean to us? You know, what is, how does this apply in our lives? 2013 in Florida, uh, how, does this, how does this message apply to us? So the, uh, the Zohar, which is the primary book of Kabbalah, Jewish mysticism, discusses this concept and says there's actually three phases of exile. You have the first phase of exile, which is pre-Moses, or the, the part where the Jewish people become enslaved, and they're simply slaves in Egypt. And then you have the second part, which is the confrontation of Moses and Pharaoh. They get together and they have this, this kind of uh, headbutting, and then you have the third part, which is the actual Exodus. Now, this week's Torah portion really dedicates itself to Moses and Pharaoh, that confrontation, that second part. That we should probably point out that uh, Pharaoh was Moses' surrogate father. I mean, you got to appreciate that right. part of the dynamic. Right, and, and in addition to considering himself a deity, a god, yes. he's a strange bird. But also also very, uh, very, uh, very deeply spiritual person in a very corrupt type of way. But he had a... Uh, Moses, co- Moses comes to Pharaoh and God says to him, Boil power, come to Pharaoh, says the Zohar in the book of Kabbalah, says, come to Pharaoh. In other words, God's really telling Pharaoh, Moses, that I am with Pharaoh. Come to Pharaoh, I'm here with him. Come to me, as opposed to telling him, go to Pharaoh. In other words, what would make sense is that Pharaoh doesn't stand with God and Pharaoh is evil, he's bad. So go to Pharaoh. And God says, "Come to Pharaoh." So, making making the uh, the implication that Pharaoh and Moses, that God is, that Pharaoh is with Moses, and the message is that God was with Pharaoh. And even though Pharaoh was an evil person, was a terrible person, every every time you have negativity or any time there's something evil in the world, there's always some goodness there. Yeah. And Moses was confronting Pharaoh because he was trying to salvage the goodness that Pharaoh had. He was trying to take rescue some of the preserve some of the goodness of Pharaoh, and therefore God was saying, I'm with him, come to Pharaoh, come to save, you know, save, save some of the goodness of Pharaoh. Has. And this message is, is very appropriate to our, our lives, because we all deal with our own trials and tribulations and negativity and stresses and anxieties, For sure. and we have a hard time dealing with it. We say, we say why, why would God make this happen? Why would God give us this, these difficulties? And, and the message from this week's Torah portion is that there's always something good. We have to See, look at those moments of perceived negativity, those moments of, of difficulty in our lives and try to find the goodness in it. And if we do, uh, we'll, we will we'll find God in the negative experiences, we'll have a truly, a truly pleasant life because every experience we have, whether good or not, is, is a holy experience. So look for the good in every situation. I also know that today is the uh, 
dark side of the altar Rebbe, which is unique to Chabad, right. sort of thing, but why don't you say a little bit about that? The, the, uh, the, uh, founder, the altar Rebbe was the uh, founder of the Chabad Hasidic movement. Mm-hmm. Uh, he also wrote his, his uh, magnum opus was a book called the Tanya, the book of, uh, which is the, the, the primary book of Hasidic thought. And uh, in it, the altar Rebbe really discusses this concept, this concept of Boa Bara, that come to Pharaoh, that our whole life, every moment, the entire book of Tanya was written based on this concept that one, every moment we have, the Chalder, Chacha, the Eil, the verse says, everything we do, we can do for God. Even the most simple, um, physical, materialistic things, e- eating a meal or, or sleeping or any, any leisurely activity, anything that we're doing that seems to be very, uh, seems to be mundane, we can turn into a holy experience. And in fact, we can live our entire life without missing, without missing any, without missing any joys in life. We can live our whole life in a, in a, in a fulfilling way. If every moment, everything we do is borrow power, we find the goodness in everything. Great. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.